Definitely. So thank you, Hollis. Uh, before I get started, I also wanted to chime in and say, great job, Ella. Uh, there was a lot of information that we just heard, and um, I'm really impressed. So um, uh, something that I didn't know much about, so very well done. Thank you. So, going, <laughs> so uh, yeah, my name is uh, Dejal Chinoy, and I have been a mentor here with Magic for the last few years. And this year, I had the pleasure of uh, being a mentor to Joanna, uh, who's sitting right here next to me. Um, Joanna is a 12th grader, uh, lives in Krakow, Poland, and had applied to our uh, to this magic session as an independent. Um, she is very passionate about astronomy and coding. Um, and in fact, actually in her application, she had indicated uh, that she's interested in um, doing projects that actually combine different STEM fields. And I think the project that she ultimately decided to do um, kind of, uh, we were able to achieve uh, that goal of hers. So uh, that's that's been quite good. Uh, I'll let her tell you uh, in detail about what she's worked on. But uh, before I hand the mic over to Joanna, I wanted to uh, say that um, in the last few months, I think we've been working together since uh, end of January, the last four months or so. And um, I have uh, found her to be a very intelligent, very hardworking, extremely motivated person. Um, she is a very quick learner, uh, picks up uh, new concepts, new technologies really fast. Um, but more than that, I think it's been just fun getting to know her and working with her. Uh, we have had many interesting conversations um, about our uh, things that we love in common, which is um, reading, travel. Uh, so besides working on the project, we actually also had a chance to get to know each other. And that has been a very special part uh, for me. Um, so I feel very lucky to actually have had this opportunity to be her mentor and also to be here in Krakow with her for her final presentation. Um, so yeah, I will let Joanna tell us about her project now. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Uh, so this is my mentor, Nisha. Uh, she's she came here all the way from San Diego to visit me, Diego. Um, and her her year used to be in software engineering, right? Uh, and she's advocating for more representation of girls in STEM through projects like this one. And like I said, we have a lot of a lot in common, which we got to chat about during our sessions. Next slide, please. Um, so my project started with just getting to know the basics of Python, um, starting with a course on Code Academy, which uh, included libraries like NumPy, Matplotlib, Pandas, uh, for data anal analysis and visualization. Um, and then I moved on to learning Lightcurve, which uh, the project was uh, all about. Uh, and then as kind of an extra, uh, we ended up with creating another uh, I would say a whole project, uh, which was a website. Um, and uh, yeah, can I have the next slide, please? So my project included analysis of uh, light curves from binary stars and using the library light curve. Um, binary star systems are two stars uh, who orbit each other. And uh, their light curves are very interesting, especially the system that I focused on. Uh, due to the changes in light as they orbit each other, uh, we can see how uh, the brightness increases and decreases over the period of time uh, as the stars rotate each other. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so I did have experience with that previously. Uh, however, I had to do the graphs manually which was a very long and uh, quite annoying process. And then it was suggested to me that there is a library for that uh, using Python, uh, which should make the process much faster and also easier later to analyze the data. 
Uh, it's still a relative, relatively new tool and there's not much about it. Also, not all stars uh, can be analyzed using light curve, uh, but it's been really nice learning it and uh, getting to know astronomy from a different point of view. Um, also, the course that I took at the beginning on Code Academy, uh, I'm sure it will be very useful as data analysis and uh, creating graphs in just Python using the different libraries and not only light curve uh, is a big part of astronomy. Next slide, please. Um, so my journey with light curve started with just experimenting, uh, creating different graphs, trying out what stars uh, give me what results. Uh, and I ended up with the final project of uh, code that gives me nine graphs, uh, which I described here and also on my website. Um, next slide, please. The main star, uh, well, literally star uh, of the presentation was Kepler 47. Uh, however, all of the three stars here are in the Cygnus constellation. Kepler 43 and 45 aren't binary star systems, but they share a lot of a lot in common with Kepler 47. Um, Kepler 43 and 45 have both one uh, planet uh, orbiting the system, and Kepler 47 too. Uh, so the first graphs are folded scatter graphs, uh, which are adjusted to the period that the exoplanets orbit the system or the star. Uh, with Kepler 47, two of the planets orbit at the same time, so it's really, too, really easy to adjust the graphs uh, to the short point of orbital period. Um, the second graph is same but, but connected, so we can see uh, all the variations and where the stars, where the planets exit um, the orbital period. And the third graphs, uh, they're on a much larger scale. They're not adjusted to the orbital period. So it's not just one turn of the planet around the system, uh, but with the dips, we can see each time where the light was uh, shut off by the planet being covering the stars. Mm, the, star, the graphs aren't perfect. Uh, the third ones, I would say, are the best quality because they remove a lot of uh, instrumental noise, so uh, we don't see as much of variety in the graphs that's just uh, due to how instruments are, and it's not something that can be corrected that easy, especially when I didn't have information about how the observations were taken. Next slide, please. Um, so, yeah, I've talked about what I've done so far with my project, and uh, like I said, the second part that I was born during our mentoring session. Um, I'll for sure continue in the future, um, adding more stuff and creating it uh, as, and using it as my personal website. Um, with Light Curve, I'm sure it will be useful in the future as well as the experience I got with Python and that analysis. Next slide, please. Um, so my experience has been great so far. And uh, I think the highlight now is obviously Tejal coming to visit me here, uh, but I learned way more than I was expecting. Uh, and I'm sure it will be way more useful in the future than I also expected. And so it turned out to be an actual opportunity that gave me uh, a lot of progress and tools that I can use in the future, either in my personal work or like the personal website, something that I've always uh, wanted to have. And I'm sure that will be a nice thing to have. Next slide, please. And so this is my website demo where you can also see the results from Light Curve. Um, the website was created from a GitHub template. Uh, I was looking for a page which uh, was a one-page website, that, but you can navigate through it using navbar, as well as buttons like here I'm showing on the video. Uh, it has a section about my experience, education, programs like Good Magic, and uh, skills, just other information about me, and also a project section uh, where I talk mainly about the Get Magic program and describe uh, all of the nine graphs more in detail and explain a bit more what you can see on each of them. 
And uh, other than that, there's also two projects that uh, were the thing that got me into Lightcraft. Next slide, please. Yeah, thank you for your attention. <laughs> incredible work, incredible work, Joanna. We will now open it up for questions. So please take yourself off the mute and ask away. Great job. <laughs> I can ask a question. That was really amazing, Joan. I think we're all silently stunned a little bit in digesting that presentation. Um, I noticed that there was a paper on one slide, and so it sounded like you'd done some previous work, and then you wanted to see parts that you could automate and use computer science to apply to, um, which also raised the question in me of how you got into astronomy and where it started. So could you talk a little bit about your journey with astronomy and your inspiration for this project? Um, I was always interested in math and physics and was looking for a way to combine that in a more interesting way than uh, what the school curriculum was offering. And I, a bit by accident, I ended up on astronomy classes offered by one of the universities here in Krakow. Um, and then there I met my later supervisor, which uh, for his PhD is uh, working on binary stars that uh, are in the Krakow catalog. Uh, so those are stars where there's basically no information about them other than the fact that they've been identified as binary stars. Um, and I got to help him with uh, a couple of objects, uh, which later was turned into the poster and then a post conference paper about the few systems that we've done. Very cool. And have you talked with um, this the supervisor and your kind of advisor about the work you've done here and how you might apply it to the other work you're doing with them? Uh, yeah, overall, Light Curve was from his suggestion. I would have never probably found out that it didn't even exist. Um, like I said, it's a very niche tool and uh, photometry. So using the light curves to get physical parameters is also a very niche subject that is used only for a certain amount of objects like binary stars, which accidentally is his specialization. Uh, but yeah, he hasn't got the chance to learn light curve yet and to try it in his research and um, offered me to, whenever I have time or motivation, learn it for myself and maybe teach him after that. There you go. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. So he'll be learning from you now. <laughs> Hi, Joanna. I have a comments to ask question. So um, the question is, did you know any coding before you joined Magic? And then another question is, so there's coding and there's science, astro you know, astronomy, and they are so different from each other. I want you to comment on how the learning was, what the challenges were. So, yeah. So I had some experience with coding. I took into camp slash crash courses. One was on web development. So with that, um, like creating the website wasn't a problem, but uh, I wouldn't have been able to do that without the just help. Uh, with Python, I only had minimum experience as it was only with more niche libraries that had no use in that analysis, like what I was looking for here. And uh, coding is a big part of astronomy. And uh, while I was working on the previous project with uh, that turned out to be a poster and post conference paper, um, I knew that there are easier ways to do things, uh, mainly using Python. And um, but I didn't feel as comfortable using it, uh, so I would I preferred to use other tools that were uh, maybe not so straightforward, but gave me the same result. Thank you so much. Amazing work. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, uh, great Maybe. job. I, I just have a question. Um, the binary stars, do they do they cease to exist together? And 
can you see them with the naked eye at night? Uh, well, you can see them with a better eye, but uh, you won't notice a difference between a binary star and a normal star. Mm. The orbital period, um, the it's not such a blink like, for example, pulsars where you just see blasts of light going on and off. Uh, and it's not that big of a difference that you'll notice them uh, just looking at the sky. Thank you. We do have a question in the chat. Uh, the question is, out of curiosity, did you see the eclipse path in Krakow like we saw it in America? Uh, yes. However, I was sleeping very hard this week, so uh, I didn't get a chance to go see it. Yes. So wonderful. Again, fantastic presentation. The amount of work that you were able to accomplish in this time and the depth is just impressive. Um, final question I have for you out of curiosity, what since you are a 12th grader, what are your plans for next year? Uh, I'm actually going to study astronomy in the Netherlands. Wow, congratulations. We can't wait to see what you do from here. Great.